maybe before we come to prayer, could I ask us to sing a hymn that we can all sing together? Oh,
We cannot go without your presence, mighty God. We of each and everything that we shall do tonight here. Bless each and every word that shall come out here, mighty God. Prepare the speakers, the words that shall come. May that build us, may that give us hope for the life that lays ahead, mighty God. May the words that shall come out today comfort us and prepare us, prepare us better for the journey ahead. We ask all this in your name, through your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We take our seats. Director of Ceremonies, Mr. Jane, allow me to read a short word from the Gospel. That is a way to encourage us as we start this service. I'd like to also greet family, we say children, all our national leaders that I'm seeing that are in our midst, all the friends of all the mourners will come to gather to us. Allow me to read from the Holy Bible, Exodus chapter 14, verses 13. The heading says, Crossing the Sea. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the salvation of the Lord today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israel lights to move on. This is a well-known scripture from the story that we all know from the Bible, from the Israelites, as God took them out from Egypt to the promised land. There came a time where they were surrounded, where the Egyptians were following them. But they were confronted with the Red Sea in front of them. The Israelites were on the other side, the Red Sea was on the other side. So they were caught up in a situation which was difficult for them to know which direction which way to go. And the word came through Moses unto the people of Israelites to say, do not be afraid. Stand still. And today you will see the salvation of the Lord. I therefore believe that there is something when death surrounds us of a loved one of a person that we were depending on, a leader that we were counting on, I'm sure as a family, as a wife, as the children, you might be caught up in a situation where you think, what next and what will we do? The Lord says, is saying unto us tonight, do not be afraid. The salvation of the Lord is today. I will fight for you your battles. Put your trust in me. And as we continue to follow the story, we have seen that the Lord has indeed come true unto this, his word and has delivered the children of Israel. And so I do believe that the good Lord is fighting your battles today. The good Lord, you might be in a situation where you think, what is the way, what is the situation forward going to be? The Lord is saying, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. For those words, fellow men, mourners, friends, and compatriots, family, let us be encouraged that we shall not be afraid because we believe 
the Lord is with us. And the Lord will fight the battles for us. Whatever the battles that are in our own personal lives, in our own personal situations, <coughs> the Lord is saying, put your trust in me, be still, and I shall come through for you. May God bless these few words tonight. Amen.
Then in on the 26th, because 26 is a historic number, when countries, the 26th of July is uh, when the first battle, the first defeat of the Americans in the barrack of um, Moncada. And the 26th of August is our Ogumbogashi's battle. Hence, we decided that we should take uh, this number 26, but we say it should be 26 of July. And it was in 1992 when the association was launched and the late Shukwamene became the first chairperson. It was the other way around when we excuse me. It was the Honorable Shukwamene, the first chairperson, the founder chairperson of the association. That's why when I heard that uh, this day was uh, given to us, though I had it very late, I felt it that we should really come and uh, pay our tribute to our first chapter. Most of us who met uh, Brother Shubameni when he attended the party school in Cuba, one can find the following attributes, though not all that I'm going to mention. In him, you could really see the intelligence is in a full capacity. The gentleness, love for his people, determination, positive attitude, and hard work. That is how we came to know him as a person. And back home, during these days, whenever we meet each other, not only me and other former students, I think uh, Spanish language have got, I don't know, an, an influential language. If you want to crack a very good joke and you know Spanish, it will be related better in Spanish rather than in any other language. Because I remember when we meet, I'm with my husband, we crack a joke, we laugh so loud, and when you interpret what you were laughing at to the next person, it doesn't make sense. But what I'm saying is, he conveys in Spanish with astonishing fluency. After a long time, you feel he just came from Cuba. Ronnie? What we are saying here is the late Shukwamene can relate to all of us. He looked at us as the same. We can joke, we can talk, even when he became a member of parliament. When you find us, there is no distinction. Our jokes continue. We will miss that. We will be cheering. He fought for freedom and justice, mostly for the young generation of Namibia, which he has done from his tender age. History cannot be rewritten. We just have to speak a person as he is. His way of being cannot be changed by anyone.
they got to strengthen you during this dark and difficult moment. May God hold your hand into his presence as he fills the vacuum left by your dear husband. We know it's a new page where you have to continue with your children around you without asking. But with God, everything will be fine. His life was cut short, but his Life achievement should comfort all of us because he lived a life worth emulating. We will always remember our brother Superman. Estamos unido en la solidaridad. And always we say in Spanish, hasta la victoria siempre to our home. Patro muerte de Venceremos. Thank you. The children of my dear brother-in-law uh, at the late Ignatius Kotongo to family, family members, all friends, uh, we may be here table the wife of my mentor, my teacher, that Andipa, who was also a key person of the friend, the Cuba Namibian friendship. Uh, I felt I don't have courage. Then I I would like to, you know, I have been encouraged, number one. I'm married to a wife who also studied in Cuba. So you can count me, I am one of you, because I'm married to you. <laughs> uh, my wife, those uh, remember, Bermina Chatuka, no, but now, uh, studied in Cuba for almost close to 10 years. Uh, I would like to, you know, to uh, do three things as a, a way of uh, comforting my sister here. I call Meme uh, Luisa, my sister, because her mother, Meme Taimi, who is there, is my primary teacher who has really taught us with love. And she has taken us as her own children. Number one, can I ask anyone who has got a, a can sing uh, from the hymn book, the song that I think we know, it has got some words that I know are encompassed in all the attributes about Takeshi uh, Kamini, that is peace. Um, 518, if I could help people just to come here and uh, we sing that uh, with uh, that message. Any person would be comfortable coming here and we sing together, that is part one my contribution. Uh, 518 from beyond the heart. If you can come here, I will be very happy. Yes, please. Any person? I'm going to be with my cuñado. Yes, please. Cuñado means we brother in law. Very good. We have been together, we survived in the singer, it's when we live in Cuba. We grew up together. Let us face the memory of the
I think you can talk to Ronnie, I will talk to Ronnie, he's teaching history. I think it will be appropriate for what you are saying, you want to go and study political science and international relations. So I, we left the matter with that. So I talked to Ronnie and he called Ronnie at some stage. So I thought the matter was closed. Only for Ronnie to turn around and uh, recruit me. And I was resisting, actually, it took me really a lot of time. I was saying that I'm really not a politician. I, 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 you know, I just felt I have done my part. I must now focus on doing what I want to do. But so eventually we were told you must come to Wintu. And uh, we came to Wintu. I'm cutting a long story short. So those of us who were now to travel, that's now Bodie and Ignatius, and the students who were returning were called to the old compound. Those who know what the old compound is, you know where ShopRite is in Kapitura, there, that complex. There were the offices of the unions, Lanzo office, said the progressive forces, if you may want to call them, lined up there. So we were called today in that big space to be told about logistical arrangement and travel arrangement back to Cuba. So while we are there, so the three of us, of course, the others, they speak Spanish there, we are trying to we don't understand, but we know we are speaking different languages, nevertheless. So, as we were standing there the, with the Ronnie and the other one day, some students from the group came to talk to us. Uh, I, I must say they were good Samaritans. So they tell us that, by the way, uh, we understand you are going to Cuba. Just make sure that you have enough Toilets, so hormone, etc. So we were <laughs> we were asking ourselves, really? Not we didn't tell them, but after they left, of course, we were saying, but how come do they want to go back if the situation is so calm? So they really were just advising us in good faith that the situation is not good particularly basic necessities we should have. So, of course, we wouldn't, you know, maybe say raw mom there, packet of half soap and so forth, toothpaste, that's, because that's all what they said. We didn't know now what that means. So, as I said, we left around August, September day, our Departure was delayed to a month or two months or so. So we got on the flight, as a matter of fact, I don't think we were having passports, I'm not so sure. <laughs> but I can't remember quite well. But we traveled to Cuba, it's a long journey. You know, it's a long journey, I can tell you, over the ocean. So we landed there, you know. The first thing which we could not cope with was the heat. It's humid. It's an island. Cuba is an island. It's maybe you take one of the regions, the smallest regions, in terms of geographical size. So it's very humid. And, but the very first signs of seeing that the situation was not that very friendly was, you know, chills. Wherever you go, you see people chewing. You know, we were just not used to it. If you want to buy something, you must chew. Ultimo means who's the last? Ultimo. So you look around, the queue is winding up today. We say, really? That was the first introduction. Not you understand. So, but nevertheless, we 
lesson uh, I can talk, as I've said, is we learn to be good patients. You know, we learn to be patient uh, through that. But the greater lesson was that the little you have, you share. You don't consume everything for yourself. That was one of the lessons. Patient, share. Now, uh, as of course we went to the school where we were supposed to be, uh, looking around, we see posters there having pictures of Fidel and Simon Fuegos and other Cuban luminaries or revolutionaries, if you want to call them. So it's written. Hasta la victoria siempre. So we we'll say, hasta la victoria siempre. That's always written, hasta. But you say, hasta la victoria siempre. So it's the three of us are sitting there looking at one another. We are tight, of course. We went, you know, to, to rest, of course, and become acclimatized to, to life, to Cuban life. So for one year, 10 months, we were taught Spanish. <laughs> we were taken through Spanish. But the good thing about Spanish is unlike some of these languages where an A is different from an A, an S is different from an S. At least with Spanish, an A is an A, like we know in English, you know? So that helped us. So we did. Spanish course and so forth, but also some basic courses were incorporated during our first year. So, uh, but of course, as we sometimes now we're going out interacting with uh, our Namibian compatriots, we met uh, Sebastian Daitunga, the current. Inspector General, we met Erika Shafuda, the former Executive Director of Finance. We met Deputy Minister Tommy Nambahu, Victor Shok Shipo, and some of those. Those were now senior students. So after one year, so they left us, so we were left there alone. But they were the ones who could interact with us. And they were telling us that, uh, you know, we are, they were lucky in terms of English because Advocate Vince Governors was also at once a teacher on the island of Cuba and she was teaching English. So they could talk English fluently. The rest, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you they speak Spanish just the other way around. Now, when we return from Cuba, some people say to me, what language do you speak? They say we speak Cubano. There's no, they don't speak Cubano, they speak Spanish. <laughs> In Latin America, they speak Spanish and Portuguese. So, but interestingly, when we were there, uh, because most of the time we're communicating in English or Africans, if we want, you know, to cut off. See, there are too many years that we speak <laughs> Africans. <laughs> but the interesting thing is, I think they took a bit of interest in these three gentlemen. Why are they speaking English? Why would you send people who can't speak Spanish to Cuba? So, dispatched to Cuba is English teachers, as we were talking with them. So later on, they were telling us, we thought we were sent here as English teachers. We said, well, no, we just came to study. So that was interesting. But another interesting reality was they were also interested in this mythical figure called Shumi. You know, outside, for whatever reason, Nanso was more among the youth, particularly in Cuba, I suppose. We know more of Nansho because probably demonstrating here, you know, doing all sorts of things. 
So they were saying we must establish Nanso. He want us to tell them more about Nanso, which we did, of course. But we are very clear that it's not necessarily Nanso who sent us here, and therefore we are having, you know, a different responsibility. And of course, we went about, you know, uh, asking a few questions how they are normally organized. In Cuba itself, they have what they call Isla de la Juventud, Island of Youth, within the bigger island. That's where Namibian students who were not at tertiary institutions in school. So that's where the majority but when we came here, of course, they were scattered all over Havana, the various provinces, Santa Clara, Santiago de Cuba, Cienfuegos, what have you. You know, I can't remember how many provinces they were in. Sicilia. Etc. So they were scattered all over there. So we, we were, of course, studying, but we seemed to be doing language. We were having a bit of free time to travel around there. But the only means of transport were buses. You know, and uh, you know, they have this vehicle. Sometimes when they show Cuba, you see on the streets, they show this old. Cars that are very strong, they are called La Machina, you know. So that's what was our means of transport. You get into a bus, you chew. You go to a restaurant, you chew. You go to a hospital, you chew. I can tell you, we have just become used to. And we are wondering, how do these people survive? But, you know, our period in Cuba corresponded with what is referred to as period special. Special period. And, uh, there was already a blockage. With period special, that's how they termed it. When the USSR disintegrated, you know, then because Cuba was doing butter trading, they give sugar, they get oil. They give the zika, they get oil. So when oil. another government or regime took over there, the USSR was integrating, the supply diminished almost to a standstill. So everything was so difficult. And now, uh, as I say, I'm cutting a long story short, to come to the issue of toiletries. So after a year or so, we ran out of our supply. Uh, then, you know, we have to say, what do we do? Uh, we wrote letters. Having ambassador there, I remember there was uh, Ambassador Aquenia, I think he came a little bit later. But we campaigned, and then we got a stipend from the government. We sent the stipend, you know, whether it was monthly or after three months, the students wanted to go on strike. And the three of us must deal with this situation. <laughs> we were saying, only us take responsibility for this. So we dispatched our foreign minister, Rodi, to go and talk to the, to the ambassador. So when he came back, he said, no, the, the ambassador is dismissing those students, saying they are kids, they must go. Now, as former student leaders were saying, ah, uh, the ambassador is playing with fire. So the three of us decided now we must go to the ambassador and 
supplies while you are waiting for the stipend to run out. And then we communicate back home. When we have to go and make calls, we have to walk. I'm not uh, exaggerating. We walk from here for most, you know, how can I say? Um, up to Probably Marua or the center of town uh, by foot. Or if you miss the bus, the next bus come after two hours or whatever. You know, so we walk. But the good thing is the safety on the street. You can ask the ladies. Hardly we do hear someone is raped, someone is attacked. Hardly so we could walk in the night those long distances because two bus our difference is eight hours. You know, when it's twelve o'clock midnight here is eight o'clock that side. You know? So we have to reconcile our time when we go to court. But we're still using this you know these telephones. Yes, we have to become you know, come used to that, coming it from, you know, a capitalist <laughs> you know, right. society and all that. But it's not that Cuba was an East Bedward. What we don't know is that what we call economic blockage is economic genocide. I can tell you. It's economic strangulation what is happening there. I can tell you if that situation repeated to you in Namibia, I can tell you without a doubt in six months. This government will have to kill Namibians in one million hours. I can tell you. Basic necessities, toilets, our students. So all of the Ignatius, we just learned that the late Bishop Boniface was his honor, so he will dispatch a few supplies through the diplomatic bank. So when the supplies come, since we are communist and socialist, he will generously share. So we have each a bottle take from the roll map and we pour the <laughs> realities. Which of so he will give us, he will give us. Now, these are small acts of humanity, but it speaks for me. Because you are saying, I'm ready to share the little I have with you. I cannot during tough times. Friends through, with whom you went through thick and thin, you will forever remember them. It doesn't matter whether someone tells you this gentleman is a COB. Swapo. This gentleman is APP and you are Swapo. You will still say, but he is my friend. We suffered together. We fought together. And that's what we need to understand. Why people will take the trouble to come and respect, pay tribute to someone like.
much from you. When, uh, uh, of course, we used to discuss a lot of things, but when we discuss, you know, he has a trademark, can you do like this? I don't know whether you know, but we like to scratch his head. You do agree with me? And then he shoots a little bit smile and so forth. And then, we, you know, we are discussing, you know, we differ, but you know, we have a gentle way of building consensus. So, because he never raised his voice when he argued, he was very, you know, very soft, if you may put it. But as it was said, he was very, he was fluent in Spanish, you are right. But I can attest that he was also very fluent in Africa. In English. And you may not have been an orator in the class of Fidel, but when he talked, you have got to listen what he said. That was Ignatius. When he talked, you will have to sit straight and listen. That was was not an extremist, but as many people have said, he was very humble. He was really a humble fighter. What I also can say is, in Cuba, it is all about service. Leadership is about service. You know, the Cubans used to tell us they were not indoctrinating us. No, not at all. They would say, this is what we are doing. We are only sharing with you our experiences. You go and decide what is good. Sometimes people say, uh, we talk about Cuba and we talk about the dictatorship and so forth. But I can tell you, if there was a dictatorship, was, was, was never going to exist because they are next to the most powerful military state with sophisticated weapon which can be wiped out. But because they follow a system which they themselves created, they can defend it because they understand it. That is important. And amidst all those challenges, as we said, we were there. Uh, we lived period special. And uh, 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 you know, it's, 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 uh, I don't eat pork, you know, but when I was in <laughs> you know, when you stay in these facilities, today, this day, you know, it's pork, the next is sheep or whatever. I have no choice. They do need to, you know, try. So, but when I come back to Namibia, I said, no, I must eat beef. So I'm back to beef. Uh, dear comrades, companions, companions. Uh, we can talk the whole night, I can talk forever about Shulamu. But all what I can say is it's, uh, uh, it's rare to find your name who's humble. When people are sent to high office, Come arrogant. You agree with me. Very few remain humble. But Shubhamen remained humble. Uh, coming back home, uh, please, before I really continue on this, somebody, can uh, the people with the hymn and the choir, we have the youth there? prepare themselves. But 
This I said was very humble. He respected for his position. He was a fighter for the poor. He was not talking about the poor only. He was talking to the poor. I repeat, he was not talking only about the poor. He was talking to the poor. He will only talk about the people there in Havana and Kilimanjaro. We talk about them when we are seated here. When we go there, then we talk to them directly. We are not talking about them. We are talking to them. And we are moving amongst them. That was Shibaba. Uh, maybe I should pause and uh, ask the youth that side have uh, indicated they can uh, give us a, a song. Over to you. Grant. Si, seguro. Si. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Mi mamá dice mi hermanito Pandi. Yamunas, uh, I was telling them there was a voice that my son uh, one or two words. Um, I'm a, I, I may become a little bit emotional because that the Shwamini, the giant that we are mourning here is, was not only my father, but a very good friend. Um, some people, uh, you know, even my friend will say, how do you connect? There was something special between me and my, I will call him my father, he will call me my son. Uh, I grew up also in Cuba, Maybe that was one of the reasons maybe we could relate when we are talking. Uh, I came here in this country uh, after spending all those years abroad, including Cuba. Maybe we could relate very well when we are talking. Uh, we could speak of the uh, issue of social responsibilities. We could uh, speak sometimes, even though I'm not a politician, we'll engage in discussion. Or sometimes an argument say, my son, what you are saying, uh, it has been said so many, so many times. What you are trying to relate here, we have discussion with the, you know, what you are saying is your comrades, what I'm saying is my comrades. Um, we are here tonight. I, I feel privileged to have known Tadish uh, in a sense that uh, um, I was inspired how he believed his life as a young man during the liberation struggle. Uh, he was very fearless. Uh, he was a man of principle. He stood by his principle. And he will always say to my son, what is right is right. And what is wrong is wrong. I will confide to him when I'm in trouble or when I need some advice, some guidance, I will always come here and see him. Mother here. Uh, what has been said here Is true that he was a man who had his principles, and most importantly, if you can come in, if you know this house, uh, it's a house of everyone. Mm. 
Uh, I will come in here and I don't feel like I'm a visitor. And I've observed of so many people coming in this house, they feel always welcome. Um, just in the last few days before his passing, he called me, my son. There is a, something small for your mother. She is my mother. There is something small for her birthday. So, oh, oh. <coughs> so we are organizing a party. Not a party, we are just celebrating. I bet there is something to, to share. The word sharing uh, is very, very important when you are talking to the children. He shared the little he had. <laughs> he will share. <coughs> um, we came here, and I remember very well that uh, that night when we arrived, we were told, no, she's the chair. Is going to be the, you know, the MC of the of the evening uh, marriage. Okay. There is, he was planning towards that, and it's something that is also going to. Happen. They have lived with mom for a very long time, and he was already inviting us to celebrate that moment. Um, I'm, I'm speaking a little bit, I'm a little bit emotional because I'm also having a responsibility now here to my Bushehe, my young brother, uh, and winning, and also to mom. Uh, he did not pass his legacy. Everybody is testifying that he has done a wonderful job and his legacy will continue. And that's what I would like to also testify here that we will be part of this family, will be part of this house. And his ideology, like those who have grown up in Cuba, Patrio Muertes, siempre. Uh, we don't um, we don't retreat when we are fighting a good cause. Uh, just recently, we were the uh, El Dia del Embargo. Um, they were the, 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 the event that the Americans are putting on imposing on the Cuban this economic embargo. We were. Yeah, the other yeah. day, marching against that situation. Uh, he stood by all those principles. Um, when it was organized that they will be the Cubans, it's part of they are going to have this evening. I become very blessed. So I even put on my barrette because. There was another one, uh, the same one I gave to date, <laughs> that my son, be strong always. Uh, you have learned a lot when you're in Cuba, when you're abroad, and when we are always together. Um, with these few words, I want to also relate to what Pate Nampala had said, that we should, Jesus Christ, is our is our pillar during this difficult time. Pandu and Winnie, we must be very strong. We have uh, learned a lot. Kanyama in Ushwambo we say the Tate Ishali Mumu Kanyama Lena Lena. English literally means we were blessed to have him. Uh, we have been blessed to have the British family. He was a great man. And we pay respect to what he has done. 
And I uh, also feel that it's a, it's a honor that the state also realizes that this, this man has done so much. This, when I heard that he was honor of the state, respect or call it state funeral, he, he deserved it. Irrespective of uh, political ideologies, he was a man who fought for everyone in this country. The poor, the rich, as they said here. Mommy, uh, we are here, we are remaining here. Uh, the family, friends, we must remain united now and forever. And this is strongly what I that the Shivamen would want. Uh, on his country, on his party, on his, on his family, he wants a united people. That's all what is to do. And for my own purpose as a son, I will strive for all those things. Uh, thank you very much. There's one song, I don't know whether this would be a just maybe one verse. I was not listening to the tributes and the remembrances of just to say really a short few words. Um, I, I think like Comrade Chikwamani is somebody who was shaped by the ideas of the Cuban Revolution. They have influenced many people. If you see the Namibians who were in Cuba, they don't have the same, they're not the same as other Namibians. Um, they are more committed to public service or to serving the people, less selfish. When we think about the environment that we're living in today and the things that we read about in the newspapers, we can only appreciate that Comrade Chikwamene and so many others Live according to principles. This is something that we need very much. Um, I don't think these, and we have to find better ways to pass this on to our children. Um, I, I can tell you that my daughter is studying in Cuba now, and the situation in Cuba is probably worse now than it was during the special period. And by the way, when my daughters were infants, we went to Cuba during the special period just to express our solidarity. Uh, we didn't meet you there, but we, we were there for a few days. But I'm so happy she's there because she is acquiring, um, she's acquiring even stronger values that are going to help her to better serve Namibia. Um, to the family, you, this is a great loss. Your husband and your father was a great man. And I just give you my solidarity, my love, and my respect. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, OJ. Uh, the bereaved uh, sister in law, Madam Lois Woman, and the children, bereaved. Uh, Family members, fellow owners. I do not want to bore you. I have said already my tributes on one of our or some of the platforms. And I just want to consolidate. What was said here 
correct. The famous was cotton was for many. To some of us, the respect of his political wish, present political wish, to some of us, he is a national hero. Nothing less than that. Comrades who are many believed in Marxist and Leninist uh, philosophy. He believed in uh, scientific socialism. And has adopted that philosophy before even he went to Cuba when he was a student leader. First as a Secretary General of NANSO, the President of NANSO. Some of us were inspired by Comrade Swamini during our youth life to leave the country and went in exile. We got trained in Lubango, but we didn't stay longer there and we came back. When we came back in 1992, I'm fortunate I was one of those <coughs> swap with Lick members of the Regional Executive Committee in Kavango. I served as a vice chairperson of the Youth League and I came to attend the first Swap Youth League Congress in Namibia in which we unanimously elected Comrade Yusunasu Swameni as our first secretary of Swap Youth League in an independent Namibia. I know Comrade uh, uh, Mwango was a secretary before him. And we were together at that Congress. Comrade Mwangwa, Comrade Tomina uh, Mbaho, Comrade Medusalem Mkwaya was the vice secretary, and he was the one who was acting while Comrade Swamin was still studying in Cuba. You can understand why some of us are saying that Comrade Swamin is, is a hero. You can hear from what I have said here. It's just the same like the Cuban troops that sacrificed their life at Quito Canaba. It's the same with, with the comrade who's not this woman. If you wanted to live a lesser life, there's no one in Kavango who was more respected politically by the founding father than, than Comrade Swamin, who was the top. was the top. If we, if we wanted to live a lesser life, he could return back to Swako and still could be given a senior position because of what he did during his youth life. In any given country, the young people are the majority. And he managed to mobilize them that's why Swapo attains victory in 1989. The majority who voted for Swapo are the youth, not the elders. Some youth were chased away by their fathers from their homes because of following Swamini's ambitions of getting the country independent. He was one of those who went to Zambia to go and draft the election manifesto of 1989. Recently, I said that manifesto on the platform of Swapo Member of Parliament. That was, was drafted, that you are not honoring now, we are not following it. 
we have changed to so-called uh, mixed economy, which is a pure capitalist. Some are becoming richer, the others are becoming poor. We're not following socialism that people have sacrificed for in the bushes with AK-47. Many people died, many youth. They died because Swapo adopted the philosophy or the ideal of communism. I can call it communist because socialism leads to communism. No class societies or classless societies. But we have abandoned that at independence and we opted for capitalism. And this is why Comrade Swamini said, no, I cannot follow that path. I better suffer and die suffering. Yes, Comrade Swamini left Swapo. Never distance ourselves from common women. This is my house. My sister in law is here. I normally used to come here and meet him. It's only because of Corona that's why I couldn't come again. But we kept on talking telephonically and even at, at Parliament. Because some of us respect him for what he did of what he has done to the people of Namibia. So that's why when we hear us talking about him that openly, without fear or favor, that is a hero. That's because of that, what he did. Not because maybe we are following him to become a member of the PPP, no. What he did cannot be erased by his current political that we say no some of us is a hero and it remain a hero thank you very much yamonas familiar to Shukameni Comet Louis. I'm just arriving from where I am and I was I did not prepare myself for this. I thought maybe I was going to get here late and just be one of the comrades what was said here by Comrade Karubo is to Comrade Shinguameni and Eloise who lost their husband but we also lost a revolutionary so our compatriot and we are here to share that sorrow because we all have lost. I do not have a prepared speech. I am only here to pay tribute to my brother, my comrades, because at times when we got our independence, it was at a difficult time. It was at that time of the fall of the Eastern Bloc, and there was that euphoria by those that thought they have triumphed and the world was going to be without problems. And whoever was advocating for, was exposing ideas of Marxism, was trampled upon and even become ostracized by those who, when they were fighting, mobilizing for aid, 
looking for guns were given refuge by those that share the social ideals. It is now even said that if you were, for example, in Cuba, you were in the wrong country. If you ascribe to this kind of ideas, you are lost. But like it was said here, I do not know how many of you can count that those that died in the in Quito Panava, how many were they that are members of the Communist Party of Cuba, of the youth, the Communist youth, what I said. How many guns were given by the friends of today? Who were given probably beans and the beefs, while buccaneers and halots were given to the South Africans to come and exterminate us. It is therefore very defeating to pay tribute to homeless like Suhameni who stood firm with the firm conviction where others were but in terms of the trench of ideas, the commitment to the future of mankind. Because to us who believe in this kind of philosophy, we are members of the human race. We do not know blacks, yellow, those are subspecies, subspecies sub race of the main human race to which we all belong. It is with that conviction that we forge forward. Any system have valleys and hills. And now we are thinking that they are better off. There are cracks that we are seeing. The, imperial, the, the, the empire is cracking. Afghanistan is there for all of you. In the states, there are blue states now, red states. Probably what we have wished for others is coming back to haunt. And it's better we die with that conviction. And the future will tell. Because no empire lasts forever. Otherwise, the Ottomans would still be here. Otherwise, the Romans would still be in power. No matter how powerful, how many guns you may have. And that is the conviction of the men we are here to pay homage to. And when the revolutionaries said, revolutionaries, workers of the world unite, it is not to say workers of agriculture unite. Workers of the fabrics unite. He said, workers of the world unite. It is applied to, to us in the same way. Revolutionaries of Namibia, revolutionaries of Africa unite. It does not mean, doesn't matter what party you belong to. There are revolutionaries scattered all over. And we are told not to talk to each other. But the reactionists are finding out, reaching out to each other all the time. And some of them, they carry the Bible all the time going to church. But we were told that there are those who have to leave the 99 to go and look for that one. That is lost. Why is it that we do not practice? When you are seen to be speaking to someone who have left because of disagreements, you should be ostracized. And some of us refuse to do that, bound to that, because we know the trick. 
Today we have more comrades amongst us. With whom we have nothing in common. But there are those who are not with us with whom we have so much in common. And we, have, we, we, we better be ostracized and stand by what unites us. Because that's a common denominator. And when we say one Namibia, one nation, we mean reaching out to whoever. It is therefore, comrades, befitting for us to pay homage to the legacy of this comrade. I, for one, we campaigned for this man to be the secretary of the Soap Conflict in obsession. Some of these things are not said because they cannot fit the narrative with which we want to be painted or what they want us to be painted of tribalists. I sometimes wonder where is my house in Sambi. I cannot even speak in Kavango. But when we campaigned for people like him, we took ourselves from the list of parliament to push for the names of the, some of the comrades to go ahead. And we remained behind. But some comrades, they are very good at kicking away the ladder for no one else to climb. But history will judge. And that man was listening. And we molded. I will not be here to mention names, but some of the people are up there because we paved the way and made for them to go up there. Today, we hear all kinds of words. Today, we see all kinds of people who are negating, and sometimes you hear the person is defending the party now you wonder what party is it defending <laughs> <laughs> because it's not defending what the party stands for but what we stand for which you are not defending therefore we should not lose courage and we should take solace that we comrades like him we had maybe sometimes no man is perfect and it is necessary for us to be able to support each other, defend each other, protect each other. Because the system that have hated us is still alive and kicking. And it will be there, using the most loved ones around us to ostracize us, to paint us with all kinds of names. But like Castro said, there are many Camilos. We only have to find them. There are many Shimohuamenis amongst you. We only have to find and mold them. We say in Spanish, in la confianza está en peligro. In confidence or in trust, it's like your shadow. There is always something there. Therefore, we must be very careful to know that the progressive and revolutionary movement in the country and around is being decapitated. We now know how the Bob Mare died. We now know how the Thomas Sankara died. It was not people far from them who did what they did. And sometimes, when these things are happening, we know we need to look out for each other and protect each other. And actually, make it our duty to see to it that the legacy, what they stood for, continues. In the hills and the valleys, we must remain firm one day. I'm happy that Suhameni lived to see the cracks in the system that was so euphoric. 
that they have triumphed and that some of us with our degrees, we started when we came here with the DDCs, clearing bushes. And when you come to knock to the door of someone called your comrade, he looked the other way. Therefore, it is very important for us to pay the necessary homage. I'm not here to preach, but only to say, go well, my friend, go well, our comrade. Unity, diversity that is spoken about should apply for us to unite no matter where we can find ourselves. Because it's only those that are celebrating their neoliberal approach who thought and who thought us all kinds of things. Popular, popular capitalism, capitalism with a human face, I poor us will disappear, poor, poor, poor what to develop it. So many poor us have disappeared. With all those songs and all the advocates of neoliberalism, the world now is today more divided than ever. The poor, there are more poor people than ever. The one person is more richer than ever. So where is, it's like the people that say, death, where is your strength? Capitalism, right. where is your strength? Mm -hmm. So therefore, we must look back, find ourselves. The ideas we stood for, we fought for, <coughs> must be still the ones that unite us, no matter how far we find out each other. So, the bereaved family, I did not prepare. I'm so sorry to speak to you like this. I didn't even go to my house. I came straight here because I felt I felt I supposed to be here. My brother, we were supposed to have a meeting because of being far. We have not been able. But we spoke time and again. But he remained as convinced of the ideology and the philosophy that we believe in. So we lose him physically, but let's stand by the ideas that we stood for, that the best homage that we can pay. Time come and go, people come and go, but the spirit, you can kill the revolutionaries, but you will never kill the spirit of the revolutionaries. And that is what we take solace in, and we stand by that until the last day we are on this day. We really salute the comrade, and I do not want to repeat because I wasn't here. If I'm boring you, I, I can speak about Shifamani for the whole day, for the whole year, because so much that we, we went through. And at times, when friends were difficult to come by, we stood together. And what matters most is that there was community, community of ideas. We did not have to know our mothers. We did not have to share the village or the language. But what matters is when we called each other comrades. And is that when, that time when the word comrade really mattered. Not now when comrade can be happy to poison you and be very happy to stab you on the back and then come to you smiling comrade, comrade, when the word has become hollow and meaningless. With these many, many words, I pay my tribute to my comrade. Go where she were many. Your legacy will remain. As long as we live, we'll be able to emulate your good deeds and the Madam, there are those who have not seen their husbands. There are those who have not seen their fathers. You are only told that your nose looks like your father's or you are your height. But that you are left man enough, you should take solace that he departed, leaving you grown up and able to fend for yourself. You face the world without him. But there are many Shifuamenis amongst us. You can always count on us in our small community. 
in the way we can help, don't hesitate to come over and with a phone call, we'll be able to share. The fact that we have not been here present all the time is also what the system wants. So that you can be fending for yourself there, catching frogs to survive and eating uh, spread hand to be able to come here. But we must be resilient. Courage is the last thing you lose. And keep courage in the middle of this very difficult moment to accept. My condolences to all of you, my sympathy and empathy, but the revolutionary courage when the revolution must forge ahead until humanity is united, until humanity is or the earth is a better place for all of us. Thank you so much. I really did not prepare for this, but uh, really, I thank you very much for the, the opportunity. But we are working. Thank you so much. We teach you a few slogans. But we are working. Thank you so much. So we want to take the mic again, but no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Los hombres. Son mortales, pero las ideas son inmortales. Yes. Human beings are mortals, but ideas are immortal. Human beings die, but ideas don't die. Dice el comandante Fidel Castro. In Cuba, he was using here an English expression that hope is the last to lose. We used to say the the three of us, with our little Spanish book. La Esperanza is the ultimo que se pierde.